Okay. Oh. Hi there. So I, um, I'm Ian. I'm from Canonical desktop team. This is Ben from Red Hat. Um, we're going to talk about some work that we've done looking at how we um, sort of start, stop, and manage services in the GNOME desktop environment and some work that we've done to to um, move this over to, to being done with system D. So I think first of all we'd like to start by thanking our companies for giving us the time to work on this. Um, what's going to happen is I'm going to describe sort of the background a little bit and sort of some, some of the work that's gone before and then Ben's going to take over in a bit and, um, and talk about what he's done in GNOME. So this is stuff that's recently landed in GNOME 333, so if you have an up-to-date distribution you can try it out after the talk. Um, okay, so what's the problem that we're trying to solve? So firstly I'll describe um, as of GNOME 3.32, how, how a GNOME session gets started up. So the kind of like when you, when you go to GDM, see your username, type your password in, a bunch of stuff happens and eventually you see the shell, right? So I'll describe sort of a, a bit, kind of high level-ish, what happens behind the scenes to make that happen. So um, first thing that happens is GDM launches, launches a program. Um, depending on the session type that you chose, it's either going to launch GDM Wayland session or GDM X session, and these, these do a bunch of like sort of preparatory work. So things like um, they'll set up a session bus if there isn't one running already. Usually there is now in these days, but it's going to check that for you, and it's going to set up like a bunch of initial environment variables, um, and then it's going to launch going to session itself, which is going to do a bunch more environment variable setting up, um, and then after that's done, going session is going to launch another binary called GNOME session itself. We're still sort of cranking through preparatory stuff which is common to all sessions here. We, at this point we still don't know anything about the session you're launching but now we're going to read the session definition file which, which um, is comprised uh, of a few things but the main thing that it contains is a list of sort of required components so that's a definition of like things that you need to have running in order for GNOME to be considering your session to be up, right? So in this example, this is from a GNOME session, it's, it's GNOME shell itself and a bunch of stuff from um, a bunch of stuff from GNOME settings team and, and possibly a few other things. Okay, so there's, there's, a, few, there's a few sort of um, problems with this setup, things that we can do better maybe. So, I mean, the first thing is the things are just launched, right? So we just go, we launch all the XCG startup stuff and we find things that aren't there from the XCG data does desktop files and we launch those. Users can't decide what happens there. There's no, there's no process supervision really. So if you've ever accidentally killed a part of GNOME settings daemon in your session, you'll know that that just sort of takes down your session. You get kicked back to GDM. It's a pretty sad experience. So if it crashes, you, be, you might end up in a very bad place. Um, and some of these things here, they have ordering requirements between them as well, and we don't really have a, I mean, we have a sort of crude, where are we? Yeah, a crude way of expressing the ordering. So in GNOME session, we have this concept of phases. So there's a couple of things that need to be ordered between each other. So if, if for example, the key rings environment variables need to be set for GNOME shell itself so that you can use the SSH agent, the GPG agent, things like that. We don't have a proper way of saying that the keyring needs to be launched before the rest of the session is launched. What we have is the, in, the, in the definition of, of GNOME keyring itself, we say, right, if, I, if we're auto starting this, start it in the early initialization phase and then start GNOME, GNOME shell itself later on in the display server phase, right? We can't, these two components don't themselves express how the dependency between them works. Possible that that could be done a little bit better as well. Um, and also, there's going to be an initial setup case here as well. Um, they either, components either start or they don't start. So, for example, if you wanted to possibly start a piece of GNOME settings daemon, depending on whether you have a piece of hardware, you can't really do that. It has to, the component has to check that itself and then either exit or just sit around doing nothing, basically. Um, what else? Oh, it's, hard, it's hard for, so if you install something new and it wants to insert itself into the startup um, sequence of the session, it's very hard for that component to say exactly when it should be, it should be inserted into the, um, into the session startup process. So it can use one of these phases from GNOME session, but it can't say, 
I must start after this thing has started, but before this other thing. We, we do only have a very limited set of capabilities available to us here. So perhaps it's a way of doing this better. Since all of this stuff was done, we've, we've had a more advanced um, service management system sort of come along and sort of take over, really. Um, it's system D now. We're all familiar with, with what that does at the session, uh, the system level, sorry. So most distributions now, they use system D. Um, we know what we get when we, when we use it for launching something like your web server or your mail server or your LDAP server or something like that. You can get advanced process management, supervision, many different types of services, um, advanced dependency management, and sort of arbitrary ordering of services with respect to each other, um, for advanced failure handling, so if something crashes, doesn't just die, um, System D can, can control in a nicer way, like when and how and how often and all these sorts of things about the restarting behavior of things that break. And also it's got a, um, some nice sandboxing capabilities as well, so you can restrict what things can do on your system, what parts of the file system they can see, whether they can see each other, that kind of thing. Um, so we've we use this very extensively for system level services, but we haven't really, although we do already to some extent, we haven't really explored how much we can transfer this concept into the session level stuff. Turns out that it is actually possible to transfer quite a lot of this stuff into the session. It's actually possible to manage most of the GNOME session in this way, and this is the work that we've done. So, yeah, that's what I just said. So. Um, this, there is some prior work here, so this is, uh, there's a typo on this slide, by the way. This, when I say 1604, there it should say 1610. Um, a few of us in the, on the Ubuntu side, a couple of years ago, we worked on an early, uh, a couple of earlier iterations of this, so we proved, we proved downstream that this, this work could be done. Um, you probably can't read those screenshots, but I mean, the top one, the top terminal there is um, Unity 7, which you can see this is a Unity environment, back when we had that, rest in peace. Um, and the bottom screenshot is sort of a process tree from that session. So Ubuntu 1610, we had a very early downstream, much worse than what we've got now, proof of concept version of this, and that shipped out to all of the users of that. And um, as, you, as everyone knows here, we moved away from Unity in Ubuntu a couple of years ago now. So we lost all of this work then. And then um, since then I was working on um, how and how best to transfer this work upstream to GNOME, and that's what I've been working on. Thank you to everyone who's chivied and helped me along the way and reviewed my stuff. Um, there was actually, uh, interesting to note, an, an even earlier iteration of this using upstart user sessions back in the sort of ancient steam engine days of, let's say, 2015. Um, so SystemD wasn't the first um, uh, supervisor to be able to do this, but it can do this. So we've proven that it can be done, and I've done some work, and then after this, um, we sort of stalled in getting it upstream a bit, and that's, that's partially because the work is really complex to review. It can be done in many different ways, um, and, it's, and it, uh, there are lots of ways in which it can go subtly wrong, as we'll hear about some of those in a minute. Um, so I... I was working on other things and I didn't push people as hard as I might have done. Other people, you know, it's, it's difficult stuff to review, so um, it's possibly not going to be anyone's first, first merge request when they look at their list, to look at a massively complicated list of 25 service files and we'd figure out if the ordering is done correctly. So it did stall for a while. But then along came Ben earlier in the year, maybe towards the end of last year, I can't remember. I'm not sure. Um, and he thought, you know what, it sucks that this is stalled. I'm going to pick this up. And he reviewed what I did, decided that in some ways it could be done better. To be fair, it could have been done better and improved it. Pushed tons of changes um, upstream and then managed to get everyone in line to review them. And the stuff is now landed. So that's really great. So thanks to you for doing that. Um, I can take claim for the initial half of the work, well, maybe the initial third of the work, but really getting it over the line and doing the rest of it is, is this, guy's, this guy's credit to have. So I don't want you to think too much about the fact that I'm talking to you first here. Um, okay, so now I'm going to hand over. So I've described sort of the past, what came before and what the problem is. Ben's going to describe sort of the present, what he's done, what we've both done and, and how 
the new world order looks in GNOME as of 3.33.90. So, here you go. Okay, thank you. Does this work? Yes. Uh, first of all, thank you. I mean, without the whole work that Ian has been doing, everyone else, it would have been really hard to figure out the pain points and then go from there and try to improve the implementation further. Um, so one of the issues that we have to move into the systemd world is that we need to keep the whole XDG auto start fights working as is, because we still have all the services that will rely on them and keep relying on them for quite a long time at least. Um, we might not even deprecate that mechanism for starting services uh, for applications. So uh, the non and also another thing was that the non-systemd startup should remain functional because we do still have free PSDs, as far as I know, who are not running on, on systemd and just breaking them completely and not, would probably not be a good idea. And actually, indeed, right now, for example, GDM on Fedora will currently still start using the old mechanism, automatically do a fallback, because SE Linux is kicking in and prevents us from starting this systemd services in the user instance. Yeah, SE Linux. I still need to get back to them. Um, but we can allow services to launch using systemd, and we can move most of these components that we have, in particular GNOME settings daemon, GNOME shell, um, and some other things like GNOME initial setup towards a systemd world. Um, so we earlier saw that we have the required components inside the session description that GNOME has. And the problem there is that to remain compatible to the old uh, for the old startup path, we didn't want to I didn't want to change the required components or completely ignore them or something like that. So uh, what I added, what we added was the X GNOME hidden under systemd flag for the XTG auto start files. And if you set that to true, what will happen is that GNOME session simply will ignore the desktop file. And when it doesn't find any desktop file for the required component, it just ignores that required component. That is what already happened. So that was a simple way of telling GNOME session, all right, this system will be handled by systemd. Don't do anything with this. Um, so that solves that part in a way. And then what I'm going to describe is the launch sequence on systemd because it changes quite a bit. The first step is, as before, we start GNOME session, which is a small wrapper script, which then starts GNOME session binary. and this uploads the environment to systemd. That's the first, first thing it will do because we need some of the environment from systemd, from GDM on systemd and on dbus later on. And then what GNOME session will do is try to activate the target, the systemd target for the session, which is then GNOME session Wayland or GNOME session X11 at, as a template unit, the session ID that was given. So that way we get all the information that we need to start up the session into the systemd world and we can continue doing the work on the systemd side. Um, and at that point everything else is pulled in through the target. So GNOME session, sorry, uh, so we have a few um, targets for dependency handling. So there's GNOME session at which is a template service with the session ID only then there is GNOME session Wayland X11 target if you just want to run on X11 or Wayland, which is relevant in some cases. Um, and the actual service that starts the GNOME session binary, which runs inside the session, is GNOME session manager at session ID service. Um, so the synchronization points, to, to give it another overview, is we first start up. By the way, if you have any questions, feel free to interrupt me. So we start, that, we start the systemd target. And the first thing that will happen is that GNOME, GNOME initial setup runs. Because GNOME initial setup is a bit, of, a bit special. It needs to run really early before everything else. And it will run before the GNOME session pre-target. So that's the first synchronization point we have. And after the GNOME session pre-target, GNOME session manager target begins to start up. This is GNOME session binary being launched inside systemd for the session to manage the session. Um, the same thing happens for some other services like GNOME Keyring will launch at the same time and all GNOME session will then continue to run all the XDG 
uh, pre-display manager phases that are left over. This way we can migrate, we can still keep the XTG auto start files running and everything will work. The only thing that is really important here is that the initial setup, for example, can't be handled by GNOME session anymore because if we did that, if, if the GNOME initial setup was done using XTG out of chart files, it would be starting at the same time as GNOME keyring and GNOME keyring wouldn't be picking up the changes that GNOME, GNOME initial setup does. So there's fewer synchronization points because of this migration and that means we actually need to do handle some things on the system D side. Um, as soon as that is done, as soon as GNOME session has started up all its services it needs to, i.e. it reaches the um, display manager phase, then it will uh, signal that it's ready and at that moment we actually reach the GNOME session manager target. So that's the next synchronization point. And after this, GNOME shell is launched. Um, and then once GNOME shell is launched, we we, the session is initialized and this is signaled back to GNOME session using a service. So there's a small service that's launched which does nothing else than doing a dbus call to GNOME session binary and at that point GNOME session binary can continue to start up XTG auto search services and the rest of the session. So we get the XTG auto starts launching and we also get GNOME settings daemon processes launching at this point. And once all this is done, we reach the GNOME session target. Though there's no, nothing preventing, the, if the XTG auto start services are not launched yet, but GNOME settings daemon is done, we're going to be in GNOME session target because there is no further synchronization point with GNOME session binary with the old um, code at that point. And that, then we have the full session up and running. So the important points here are that we are basically splitting the startup phase into three, three phases or four phases. The pre-GNOME session binary phase, then we have the GNOME session binary, the normal startup phase which runs all the phases um, all the old XTG auto start stuff, then we have the display manager and then we have everything else starting up afterwards. And if we have further session services running, they could do, depend on GNOME session.target with an after, so once the initial setup, initial session is completely there, you start like the UI application so that um, GNOME settings daemon is running at that point if you need to wait for GNOME settings daemon because in most cases you probably don't even need to wait for that. So another interesting point maybe um, is that we want, obviously want a clean session shutdown afterwards um, and there's a bit of an issue because the GNOME session binary that managed, that's running, run by systemd is invisible to GDM, right? So GDM launches GNOME session binary at first but GNOME session binary just sits there and and then tell system to start up another process which is again GNOME session binary and that does everything else. So to, to, to be, make sure that we had a clean session shutdown we actually need to signal back to GDM. The, the initial GNOME session binary process needs to shut down when the session shuts down and the other way around. So I've, I've solved this part by actually this is wrong, it's a, it's a FIFA not a socket. So on the GNOME, GNOME session binary, the initial process opens a socket and on the other side, inside the, ses the systemd session, there is a small process that also opens the same FIFO and this way we can signal that a shutdown is happening and needs to happen. And if GNOME, so if GNOME, the systemd side just shuts down at some point the socket, is, the FIFO is closed and the process will be gone or if you terminate, if you terminate this user session's scope then the initial GNOME session binary stop process will get, us to get the sig signal, signal, it will write a byte to GNOME, yes? Uh, no, the, uh, so, so the question is why we can't just access GNOME session binary. Um, the reason that I'm not doing it because oh, we were going to use the system D, um, press management process for that. So I want a system D service 
for the GNOME session binary, right? And if we exec it, then it's running in the user scope rather than the systemd instance, user instance. And that would also make it impossible to, to do the synchronization points, actually, because we couldn't track the startup from the systemd side anymore because it's not managed by the user instance. Um, right, so using this, we can make sure that no matter what happens, if you shut down the system depart or if you shut down the session, the whole process, the whole session will be shut down cleanly. And that ensures that everything is fine and you can log in again and stuff like that. Um, another interesting problem was that with GNOME settings daemon, we want to run it on GNOME only. Like if KDE moved to GNOME session, we wouldn't want to run it. Um, but you might have want services that run in different setups. We also want to be able to only launch it if certain hardware is available, for example. So what we need there is the ability to depend on two different targets already being present to run. And there's basically only one way in the system need to do this, which is to put each of those into requisite after and part of on those services. So requisite means required for launching. After means only launch it afterwards. And part of means shut down again. So if you use those and put multiple services in, then the, so your service will only be running when all the other targets are running. So this way you can say, OK, we need GNOME session initialized to be a target to be up. And we need the smart, smart card target to be up or the Bluetooth target to be up to actually start the GNOME settings daemon process which is kind of nice, but um, I ran, then ran into the issue that this actually causes dependency failures. Because if in the GSD smart card case, for example, we're not using this right now, but we will be. Um, if the smart card target is not there, then this is a dependency failures from systemd point of view, which means the on failure target is launched. But we also want the fail whale to run for if the GSD smart card process crashes too often. So that's also the on failure code running. So because of this, um, we need to split the settings daemon files into a target and a service. So there's a target for every GSD Chrome settings daemon process, which has a dependency on the service. And that way, we, the on failure of the target, the dependency failure, will not have any effect on on the session because there's no on failure handling there. And on the service side, we do the on failure handling. We can show the fail whale. We can shut down the session if we need to. Um, and that then turns out to work completely fine. So this separation is actually needed, unfortunately. It's just another file, but it's still a bit more of a mess. Um, another thing there is that to ensure that if you relog in the next time immediately, like you shut, your session shut down, GNOME settings daemon has failed. If you log in immediately again, then systemd might still have the failed services around and, and actually goes like, wait, I've just started this like five times already. Uh, it shouldn't be started again. It won't start the service again in the new, new session. So um, that's why we set collect mode to inactive or failed so that systemd will clear that from its memory immediately once the session is shut down. And that way, we can make sure that if you log in immediately, it will work. Unfortunately, it also means that it won't show up as a failed, um, failed component anymore. It will probably just disappear from the list once it failed on a running session, uh, which might make seeing it that something has failed slightly uh, harder, unless you look at the logs. Um, another interesting thing that might be, uh, that happened, and it actually happened already earlier with regard to DBus, is that GNOME session runs outside any login D session, actually. So all the processes are running in the systemd user instance scope, rather in the session scope that login CTL sets up. Um, and we only have one DBus daemon running for, for the user. So this means that we can't have two GNOME sessions running for the user at the same time, for example. Uh, but we couldn't do so anyway uh, for quite a while now because we have a DBus user 
bus, basically, rather than a D-bus session bus. Um, right. I said that um, we actually have a bug there right now that XDG session ID is leaked, um, but that's going to be fixed soon. I think you have a patch, right? Yes, so we have a patch there. Um, and yes, what, there was something else I wanted to say. Right, we need to fix things all over the place. We had patches, or the, or there were already patches for that, luckily. So the problem there is that what we used to do is check which process, which session the process belongs to, but because it's not belonging to any session anymore these days, uh, it's fine. <laughs> um, we can't actually do, use this process. So we needed to update the code in Mutter, in GDM, in GNOME session to, to look up the session ID correctly. Systemd has now been improved. So now what you can do is tell Systemd automatically detect in which session I'm running in and it will fall back to assuming that you're in the graphical session that systemd knows about or in the greeter session that systemd knows about. And at that point, um, things will become easier again and we can simplify some of the Mutter and GDM code paths because you can use the auto detection there rather than having to check all the system and having to do the lookup yourself, which is a nice improvement, but it was just merged with the last systemd release I, as far as I remember. Um, another interesting thing maybe is that we do still restart dbus on every logout. So if you log out of a GNOME session, what will happen is, what, in the old world, what happened was that GNOME session would simply restart debu the dbus service. What now happens is that uh, GNOME session shutdown.target is run, and GNOME session shutdown.target will also just restart the dbus service to make sure that evolution data server, for example, is killed, because otherwise, it might just continue lingering. Um, so, what else is there to do? We currently, like GNOME Shell currently launches processes from itself, it spawns them. I can demonstrate in a bit what happens. But this basically means that, because GNOME Shell launches the process inside its own scope. If GNOME Shell is restarted by systemd, systemd will clean up all children. So right now, actually, on X11, if you do Alt F2, R, Enter, in, on, in GNOME Shell, what will happen is that basically all your applications disappear because of, not, of another issue, and that is that we are currently waiting for GNOME Shell to appear on the bus, on the D-bus, and because GNOME Shell, it tries to re-execute itself, it does everything correctly, but then GNOME, said, GNOME System D notices that the dbus name disappears, it restarts the service, and at that point it also kills all the user programs, which is not what we want. It's, it should be an easy... Yeah, well, the Wayland session, you actually just, just get logged out, so it's not quite feature parity yet. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah, probably. Um, the fix should be easy by integrating the systemd startup notification into GNOME Shell, and not relying on the dbus name, no name, and then it should work. Um, also, what I wanted to do was to improve the fail way a little bit, so what used to happen was on X11, if GNOME shell crashes, we disable the extensions, because it might be caused by, caused by an extension, and the fail way would show like a message, all right, your session has, we have disabled the extensions so that the user knows what's going on. Um, Unfortunately, on Wayland, this is not going to happen. Like, we are no, never going to see the fail whale because in that case, you know, shell crashed, your session is gone, your display server is gone. Um, and so, so you're basically left without, with the login screen again right away. So my idea was to instead show the preferences dialog on next login, and I've been working on that, unfortunately, due to some merge conflicts that didn't quite work out. So the idea there is that the user gets the normal extension preferences UI with a note saying, well, we have disabled extensions. You can re-enable that here, and you can first turn off the extensions that might be broken to recover your session. Um, so that's going to shell issue 1495 that I'm still planning to solve. Um, yeah, well, what's next? We should maybe think about the session versus user problems. 
not sure what to do there, to be honest. I think it's just, it might be something that we just need to live with. Uh, but if you have ideas, I, I would be curious to know about them. Um, what? So, right, what else can we do? We can use GNOME, we know our system D, and we can use those for GNOME settings daemon. We can shut down GSD smart card, for example. We could not launch the SD Wacom unless there is a Wacom hardware. Uh, we can use sandboxing for the GNOME settings daemon processes, maybe GNOME shell. Uh, I'm not sure. I know that Carlos is working on X-Wayland auto shutdown, which is basically needs all these things to be set up so that we can actually do it properly. Um, if you have other ideas, come forward. We can help with implementing them. And so that would be nice to hear about. And yes, it works. It's there. We merged it into 3.3390. It is currently enabled by default on the GNOME session side. For distributions, you can disable it completely with the system, the user, or you can just enable it equals enable. Um, in that case, it's compiled in, and you can still just try it out by modifying the GNOME session startup script and passing dash dash systemd to GNOME session binary. Um, or if you set it to default, then GNOME, GNOME session is going to try launching using systemd, if that's possible. Um, yeah, thanks to you for everyone who has worked on it. Um, everyone who reviewed it, in particular Carlos, I think he did most of the reviewing. And Florian also did some. And I'm sure I forgot some people. Uh, yeah, thanks. Any questions? Hey. Uh Will this allow um, to restart a GNOME shell uh, under Wayland? Um, yes and no. So actually what I did right now was that GNOME shell has two, se two separate targets, one for X11 and one for Wayland. So on Wayland, what will happen is that GNOME session shutdown is immediately ex executed. So GNOME session shutdown dot target is the unfailure action, and you will be logged out immediately. It actually works. Like if you start, if you set a restart behavior for GNOME Shell, it will work. It will um, restart GNOME Shell, but all your applications are gone. Aren't most aren't most applications activated <coughs> by Dbus uh, these days? Like there's there's like the Dbus activatable equals true. Right, but so they, they're not direct children of GNOME Shell in that case. But they are connected to the Wayland server, and oh, the Wayland right. server disappears, so they are just crashing. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I actually had it working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they'll be gone. <laughs> yeah, they will be gone. So I don't know if you, if, if you have an idea on how to better handle it, um, I'm happy to hear about it. But right now, it seemed to me that the best action is to just shut down the session and lock the user out and try to do clean, do clean shutdown. <coughs> this is really convoluted. Um, right now there's a uh, thread on Fedora Devel, a real long thread about uh, uh, improving responsiveness under heavy memory load. Uh, like right now, once you use up all your available RAM, the system just hangs until you pull the power cord, right? Uh, so one of the ideas that was thrown around was um, um, containing uh, uh, applications launched by GNOME Shell, including terminal sessions into C groups, um, which you hinted at at multiple points during this presentation. You had one slide that mentioned uh, problems caused by GNOME Shell launching, ex executing all it, its applications itself, except for the ones that are Dbus activated, which I forgot about, okay. Um, and, and, and you had another slide mentioning, uh, uh, res you were thinking about resource limits. So, so my question is, um, uh, what, what, what's the end game for this? Or, or is it, maybe it's too early, but, uh, Tell me more about what you're thinking along these lines, because um, 
I think uh, this, it, it looks like this is the groundwork for, for containing, uh, for, for setting some memory limits and, or, or perhaps uh, somehow ensuring that system services have, um, that, 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 that uh, the services launched by GNOME session, including GNOME shell, blah. This is a very bad sentence. It's okay, I know what you mean. <laughs> Go. <laughs> well, I, I haven't thought about it in great detail, but it feels to me like it should be possible for GNOME Shell to start launching stuff as something like systemd's transient applications, yeah. that kind of thing, maybe. And then if, if it were to do that, instead of executing them directly, then it would be able to set anything on those units that systemd supports, including resource limits. <clears throat> um, this is not something that's directly in the control of the two of us, we would have to talk to GNOME Shell people about this, but I think it's something to think about. Yeah. Maybe um, start exploring. We should be doing exactly that. We should be starting all application in systemd transient scopes for the user, um, and then making sure that, the, that they are shut down actually with, the, with GNOME Shell, with GNOME Session. I guess but you can just put that as a dependency. I guess the first thing that you could do there would be to start do this with no resource limiting at all, right, and see, yeah. what, see if it works and then see how much we can, you know, ratchet that up. But that, that's, that's future work. I mean, um, we'll see. Well, it's the same for GNOME settings theme, for example. The media keys uh, process, if you can map uh, keyboard shortcuts to launching any application, and you really don't want those applications to be running inside the GSD media keys service. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a bit, yeah. Right. So yeah, this session is now, it's actually a JHPool session, and it's there. And if there's any questions, or other words, I'm just... Fix it on the project. What, oh, what, the, what is going on there? Uh, I had a, a question about the... Yes. What does the user session split actually deliver us if their scope and life cycle now essentially have to be matched? I, mean, I guess I, it's like a five-year-old complaint of why did we change this if we can't use it? <laughs> well, what, what service, what function does it still serve to break the debug spec by changing the life cycle of the session bus? I mean. We basically don't have the separation. And I'm not sure we ever had a proper separation there. We, we did not, right? Um, it broke more things than it fixed. Yeah. Let's put it back. I, <laughs> and if we want to add a user bus that does user bus stuff, then yeah. let's design it and implement it, right? Yeah, I agree. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to me it seems like it would be nice to have a separate user and session bus, but at the same time I don't see that it's realistic that we are actually going that route and actually move services to the right bus and then have three buses rather than two buses and all mm -hmm. the compatibility stuff. And what are you going to run where on which? It's going to be, it would be a huge mess. So. The user, kind the user of concept is kind of not that useful. You think, think something you can't do is have, you might think, oh, I'll move my cron jobs into systemd timers, right? You, but you can't do that because you don't have a user instance running unless you've got one session running. So that doesn't, I mean, that's just one example that you might come across and demonstrating that, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I mean, you'd have to talk to the people that came up with the idea in the first place. I don't know what the positive use cases for this are, unfortunately. <laughs> I just come up against problems and had to work around them. Right. So some of the nice things, for example, is if you're working on GNOME settings daemon, you can just shut down a service and it's gone. And you can start it again and it's there again. So that, w that just fixes the case where GNOME session just always restarts the service, like, I don't know, five times or something like that. And after that, it just says, well, your session is gone. And if you don't kill it with the right signal, then it might just decide to do so anyway, right away. Um, so that actually simplifies the, the GNOME settings daemon development quite a lot, I think. That's one advance, advantage that we have now. Um, right. I'm not sure what else I could show. Hi. Uh, I, had a look, I had a look at your uh, work quite recently. Uh, I had a look at some of your work uh, quite recently and I saw uh, mention of using uh, system D generators uh, right. possibly for um, XTG auto start files but yeah. I didn't see any mention of generators at all. Are you, is that still going on? 
So that was the, so when, so GNOME Session Binary, GNOME Session currently has the nice feature that you can use, um, so, so you can use, do things like starting only in when a gconf key is set. We can't do that, for example, right now. To do that, we would need like a separate systemd service that then, that then starts targets specific to the gconf keys, and then you can depend on that. And so it's possible to do, but it's not easy. Um, in theory, we could then, if, if we did that, we could actually create a systemd generator for xdg auto start files, and then start xdg auto file start files completely using systemd. In practice, I'm not sure if if it's worth going down that route, unfortunately. Um, it would be possible. <coughs> and I looked into it because of the whole um, settings daemon stuff, because we, I'm not sure if we still have a daemon that is currently bound to a gconf key, but we do have some where it's actually interesting to do, like the w1, white one, one. Um, and we don't currently. And we can't actually on systemd, so it's actually launched, even though it's not needed. Any more questions? Guess not. Thanks. Everyone happy? <laughs> All right. Thank you.